Greetings and welcome to our weekly educational rounds here at Seclair, an integrative holistic psychiatric facility where we treat people, not necessarily diagnoses, and take a holistic view of a person's mind, body, and spirit view of wellness. And today I'm joined by two of my colleagues. On my left would be Holly from Chatham University. And on my right, Emily from St. Francis University. And I am Jim Eller. I'm a behavioral health therapist here at Seclair. And every week we attempt to open some corner, open some nook. Uh, last week we talked a little bit about going down a rabbit hole. And today we're going to explore that a little bit further about taking uh, perspective, changing different perspectives in life. So have you ever walked into a room, Allison, and automatically disliked someone? You knew that you wouldn't like them. Yeah, I'd say so. Mm -hmm. Have you ever ever been in that situation, Holly? Unfortunately, I have. Absolutely, absolutely. So sometimes it's it's our it's our view. It's where we stand from, and a lot of times it's it's how we've formed our opinions and from our from our life. Okay. So generally, there's there's three types of periods in life that we go through. Some of us say from like zero to four would be an imprint age where a child's a sponge and we, they absorb everything that they see. Why do children ask so many questions? So that they can learn from it. Right, right. Because so to about four, five, six, they're in an imprint age where they soak everything in, which is why it's incredibly important to uh, be on top of what your children is, is exposed to. Okay. Then, then from like six until all oh, like 12 or 13, they call that modeling, modeling. So what we do is the, the children will model the, the, uh, the significant people in their lives, either for good or bad, okay? And then from 14 on to like the young adulthood, it's called, it's, it's, it's a socialization period. So remember, it's these, in these type of periods uh, where our personality is usually formed by the time we're about seven years old, and then we then we can we take our different perspectives, okay? And sometimes these perspectives aren't, aren't necessarily our own. We haven't learned to think for ourselves. Did, you ever, did people expect you how to think at some point in your life? Yeah, they definitely do. How about mm -hmm. you, Holly? I agree. Sure, people people expect us to behave and take a, take a certain perspective because uh, maybe your your family didn't like uh, a certain color or a certain car. That that left an imprint on you, did right. it not? Absolutely, absolutely. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about taking perspectives today and how to change that, how to change that. So what I'd like you two young ladies is to move right over here. Get up, could you get up, please? Sure. And move right over here. And then tell me, tell me what you see. Tell me what you see here. If you would come over here, Holly. Oh, you also switch. No, no, I want you both on the same oh, side. Okay. <laughs> I'm not a very good director. <laughs> what do you see? What do you both see? A horse's face. A horse's face. What type of horse's face? A very happy horse. A happy smiling. horse. Well, how about you, Emily? It does look like he's smiling. I also see a funky little hairdo hanging down. Yeah, in yeah, that's kind of quirky, kind of, kind of neat, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So does that put you in a bad mood? Does that put you in a bad light? Mm -mm. No, of course not. No, how about both of you come over on the other side and tell me what you see? Um, a horse's bottom, a very mm -hmm. long bushy tail. Right. So what do, what do you see, Holly? Yep, a horse's butt. You see the behind. You see the yeah. behind of a horse. Mm -hmm. So did, did this change? Did this move? Nope. No. No. What did? We did. You did. So how often out there do we do we try to grab life and manipulate it like this to to, to the way that we want it to? We try to manipulate life. When we can't do that, it's we can manipulate ourselves. So what we do first of all, we have to be aware that you can go ahead and sit down. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So we have to be aware of what's going on. We have to be able to step back and become the observer. So in cognitive behavioral therapy, there's, there's a couple basic things, and one's called cognitive fusion, okay? So you were raised that Fords were no good, all right? The Ford cars were lousy, they were pieces of crap. So throughout your life, that'd be your perspective, would it not? So every time you would have saw, saw a Ford on the road, what would you have thought? Wow, that's a crappy car. Or if a friend would have come up and said, hey, I, I just bought a Ford. Oh, why'd you buy that? <laughs> right. On, on the other hand, if Chevrolets were your family's 
tour de force, a uh, matter of choice, and would you have, you, you have had a favorable view of Chevrolets, would you have not? Correct, I probably would have bought one. <laughs> <laughs> well, sure, sure. So we, we don't understand it when we, we, we can change our perspectives. We can change our perspectives. So how do we do that? Remember what we always do is we talk about having an open mind, and we talk about be having the observer behind the thinker. So what, you, what we were just discussing there, Emily, was something called cognitive fusion. It's when our thoughts are directly and intimately linked with an outcome. Okay, we can't be a, we can't be an impartial observer and tell whether those facts are right or wrong. Okay, to look through. Did you ever did you ever ask somebody to look through your eyes at a situation? Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of times. Have you? Mm -hmm. Did you ever feel like somebody could benefit by looking through your eyes and what you were viewing of a situation? Yeah, and I feel the same that I think I can benefit from looking at situations from another person's view. So how's that accomplished? I think that you have to remove yourself from the situation and try to look at both sides of it rather than just how you would look at something. So how many people are how many people get stuck in ruts during their life? How many people how many people out there are stuck in your life every day is the same, same stuff, different day? A lot of people walk through light left, right? So have you ever heard of the phrase, Holly, uh, getting up on the wrong side of the bed? Mm-hmm. I've heard that a lot. So what, what does that generally refer to, Emily, when some, oh, did you wake up on the wrong side of the bed? Typically just that you're having an off day, you're not in a pleasant mood, or, you know, you're, things are just off for you today. So what I'm going to challenge everybody out there, I'm going to challenge everyone out there to get up on the wrong side of the bed. If you get up on the left side of the bed, I'm going to challenge you for the next week to get up on, out of the bed on the right side. It's going to be uncomfortable. It's time to change your perspective and change your thing. If you generally people eat the same thing, they generally take the same route to work. They generally, if they watch TV, they watch the same type of programs, right? My challenge is to you out there to shake things up and change your perspective. So sometimes, sometimes when, when we use language, we use the same type of language, don't we? Mm -hmm. So, and sometimes there's so many words going on in, in our head that we can't, we can't change, we can't get a different perspective, can we? Mm -hmm. so, so what we do here is we try to use some mindfulness and look for the space between the thoughts. This is where the mindfulness comes in. This is where paying attention comes on purpose. Uh, Dr. Chaudhry, the medical director here, one of his favorite uh, poets is an individual by the Rumi. You ever hear of Rumi? No, I haven't. Okay. One of his, uh, one of his sayings that I like a lot, uh, Emily, is close the door of words that the window of your heart may be open. The moon's kiss only comes through an open window. Uh, what would that mean to you? I think that you need to close one thing for another to open. Right. How about you, Holly? Yeah, I agree. That makes sense. So a different perspective can't come through a closed window. Right. And when you have a closed, when you have a closed perspective, that's a closed window, is it not? Yes. So have you ever tried to argue with somebody that was really obstinate and, and you just couldn't, couldn't, you couldn't get them to see their way? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> How does that make you feel, Emily? Very frustrated. Mm -hmm. So can you ever think of somebody, could you see the world through my eyes? That's, that's a challenge that I want for you. Okay, a challenge that I want for you. Uh, and perhaps I've uh, mentioned this story before, however it's true, there was a physician, I've heard this story myself, there was a physician who never changed his, uh, his daughter's diaper. She was seven years old. And he and his uh, daughter and wife were going on vacation. They were at the airport waiting to board the plane. The wife had to go do something, said, take care of your daughter. And he was a little bit upset about it. However, babies did what babies do, and she filled her diaper. Mm -hmm. So while he was changing this diaper, he pulled it down and the smell in his sight, and he said, oh my gosh, why do I have to do this? This is horrible. I, I shouldn't be having to do this. This is going to ruin my whole trip. And then he just raised his gaze six inches. He raised his gaze six inches and saw the beautiful, loving smile of this child. The beautiful, loving, and he thought to himself, what have I been looking at? And that's, that was a choice, isn't it? Right. It was a choice. So can you view, do you want to go through life viewing the diaper or do you want to view the beautiful smile? The beautiful smile. Absolutely. So how, can, how, how would you suggest a person change perspective? Um, just be able to look at the more positive sorts of things. Um, there's always two sides to every story or situation and always looking at a more positive side would probably start to help. My challenge is out there to everyone is, is when you have a thought, so there, there were many, many, many people who, who said this term, question everything, okay? The, from the Buddha to Einstein, question everything. So would there be a problem with having to question your thoughts? Yeah, no, mm -hmm. I mean, I think you should. Mm -hmm. Are every, every one of your thoughts true? No. 
So my challenge to everyone out there, to everyone listening, is to question everything. Question your thoughts and begin to have that beginner's mind. A beginner's mind turns certainties into possibilities. So my suggestion to everyone out there is, is to ask yourself, is this true? How do I know it's true? Take some time, practice describing everything that you see, learning how to label and describe, and perhaps someday you can have a beginner's mind also, like when you see this child, and, and, and the gaze and the awe and wonder that you see in the world. Does this, child, does this child have an open mind? Absolutely, and that's my hope for everyone out there, everyone. And as always, Emily, at the end of every uh, podcast, we offer a free prescription, do we not? Mm -hmm. Fruits, nuts, and vegetables. And perhaps unplug your television and take up fishing. Great. And for truly a mindful experience, we suggest that they fish without bait. Fish without bait would be a lifetime without definitive expectations. And as always, uh, my admonishment to everyone out there is to treat everyone that you meet with courtesy and respect. Show a kindness for another today. Until then, namaste.